Hello, can everybody hear me? Okay, sounds good. Uh, hello, I'm Toshi. I'm, I'm going to talk about retro video game fonts. Uh, they're all going to be pixels, so you're going to see a whole bunch of squares, no curves. And a few years ago, I started you know, revisiting my nostalgia playing a whole bunch of arcade games, and I realized there are actually so many good uh, pixel fonts that we collectively, collectively haven't really paid attention to. And I started gathering uh, the library of fonts because nobody has uh, uh, have done it before, so it's tough being first going through like seven thousands of fonts, uh, nearly three decades of them. And I have made, oh, I'm not seeing anything. Oh no, uh, good, good. So yeah, I started collecting typeface, uh, typefaces from uh, 1976 all the way to uh, 2004, that's when, uh, around when the gaming industry switched to uh, high definition resolution, we stopped uh, pixel fonts. And this presentation is gonna be basically a, a type uh, specimen of uh, retro video game fonts. So I'm starting with the earliest uh, typefaces. Uh, this is the first uh, example from Tank 8. This is not the eighth uh, game of the uh, Tank series, it's just a, a Tank game with eight players uh, simultaneously. Uh, this design is quite uh, generic, I would say. It's not anything special. And it's really thin typeface. It could have been anything. So there's nothing special. But before going into the design, I will explain how the normal type 8 pixel typeface design uh, goes. Be in this kind of design, you can't have like one pixel of tracking or one pixel of uh, line spacing. You need to have that in 8 by 8 uh, pixel grid. So you practically have seven by seven pixels as maximum for letter forms. And, and the, perhaps the most famous uh, instance of this typeface is Space Invaders, which looks like this. Uh, the only difference between this typeface and uh, Tank 8 is the capital M, uh, which this one has two pixels in the middle, but if you go back to Tank 8, there's only one pixel. So I'm looking at that kind of difference as well. And this typeface didn't really catch on afterwards because uh, screens, screens like this is really simple. It has only black in the background, but as the uh, graphic technology evolves, you might see different kinds of background. It might, it might be forest, it might be sky, it might be uh, just whatever. And in a dynamic background, this kind of thin, single color typeface wouldn't survive. So there are uh, much uh, thicker designs like this. This is one of the fairly uh, popular typefaces at the time. Uh, this is not a complete character set, because back in those days, when the game didn't uh, show certain characters, they just skipped uh, in favor of saving memory space. And, and Japanese uh, video game companies started importing those American games, and when they started devel developing their own games, uh, they simply borrowed uh, American typefaces like this. So this is uh, Data East, so, so this is a Japanese adaptation of the same design. Uh, companies like Namco and Sega, Sega especially, uh, were quite uh, fans of this typeface. So if we go to famous games like Space Harrier, uh, you can still see the uh, influence of the same typeface. Uh, this ampersand is not used in the game, so it's using a different color palette. And this capital V is also scrolled and sort of wrapped around, but this is actually how it appears in the game, so I didn't make a mistake uh, making this shot. Um, this is how it appears in the game, and I'm using this as an example of how a typography in video game works. So there are lots of uh, letter elements, not just this 8 by 8 pixel fonts. Uh, here you see at the top, you see top score and uh, your current score, and those are just one-off lettering. So those uh, red and green ones are not fonts, and there's also 16 by 16 uh, fonts. Okay, what's happening? Okay, so yeah, this stage is called Moot. I don't know. I mean, they're made by Japanese, so. Uh, so there are lots of like uh, eight by 16, 16 by eight, or it's 32 by 32. There are lots of different formats. So it's not just eight by eight, but uh, for this talk, we're only focusing on eight by eight. For me, that's the most interesting part. And there's also a logo. Okay, it's not working. 
And yeah, there's a title screen that has a logo like this. And there's an uh, alternate uh, logo, which is like this. So this is actually the initial logo, which was used in like uh, cabinet art, poster, and, and marketing materials. But just for the title screen, they yeah, draw the, uh, drew this uh, Roman font. So anyway, that's the kind of uh, stuff that I am skipping, actually. And this is the most uh, famous uh, typeface. This is kind of like the Helvetica of arcade games. When people are u talking about or using arcade game fonts, th it's usually this one. Like even in like uh, Shovel Knight, that was uh, kind of pseudo retro video game. Shovel Knight is using a variation of this uh, typeface. And this typeface uh, was quite robust. It has like two stem thickness and one uh, horizontal crossbar thickness. And it was legible enough, and it had enough characters, uh, uh, enough, how can I say, enough characteristics. And Sprint 2, by the way, is uh, like this. It's a racing game with two players. <coughs> and this typeface became popular because of Namco. Namco was importing lots of Atari games, and they started de uh, developing their own games, like uh, Pac-Man, Fozone, uh, Galaxian, games like that. And but they were adapting typefaces already, uh, uh, changing uh, designs a bit. For example, if you look at capital E, this is aligned to the right or spaced to the right. And so are capital I, T, and Y. And if you go back to the original design, they are spaced to the left, like so. And also the capital E has a longest, uh, longer uh, bottom bar. So that's, that's how it was uh, kept used. And companies might add locus of uh, their own designs. So there are many different kinds of locus designs. This is, of course, made by non-native, non-specialists. Uh, so there are so many weird things, but that's what uh, makes this collection really fun to look at. And you need to uh, make an excuse for the push, uh, descenders pushed up, like G, for example. So that's a really common compromises. Um, when you have multiple colors, you can do decorations like this stencil or shadow effect. Uh, in this shadow typeface, you see that it's actually using 8x8 eight eight, uh, grid to the fullest. Uh, the reason is you can use shadow or outline as a space. It can work as a space. And it also helps distinguishing the typeface from the uh, busy background. So that was a really common thing. Uh, it was a really common uh, popular uh, effects in video games. And this commando typeface, by the way, has uh, t this, these two alternate designs. These were basically animation frames uh, to be used in high score screen. So if we go to high score entry, that when you beat the game or when you die, you enter your name like this. So each letter spins when it's shot. And I wanted to recreate the same thing in uh, open type uh, typeface. So I made a animated uh, SVG color font so that I can do the same here, <laughs> like that. So this is a commando reference. And to show you, this is actually type. Uh, what can I type? Uh, Toshi, like that. So yeah, this was made using glyphs and, of course, demonstrated with Firefox. And this whole presentation is made uh, with InDesign, so a huge shout out to Firefox and Creative Cloud team. And let's have a look at each style, uh, starting with Sans Serif. Uh, this is, I guess, a New York related game, so it's a Spider Man. I don't think it's related to any certain style in the, in the comic. I think it has its own style, and it's drawn really, really well. The problem is the lowercase is a bit too uh, narrowly drawn, so it has a huge uh, letter space, and the line space is not really enough. So, yeah, I think it's really well drawn, but in this uh, eight by eight pixel format, it might be uh, not really well spaced. And this one, it's a, this is a really fat one. This is like a kind of uh, like Gyosan's extra bold or Gyokeo. I like the number nine. It's so cool. Um, there's a lots of typefaces uh, inspired by magnetic recognition typeface or data 70 uh, from Letraset uh, because that's, that was a typeface of the future back then. And there's so many, uh, hundreds and hundreds of typefaces like this. 
and it was, it was used everywhere. It's not just like sci-fi or futuristic setting. Sometimes it was used for racing or football games. Um, this one, uh, football, I, I mean uh, soccer. This uh, title made a lowercase uh, uh, of their own, and it's wonderfully terrible. I mean, look at this lowercase b, or just any letter. <laughs> but yeah, again, th these were m made by non-natives, uh, non-professionals, uh, so they were doing whatever they pleased. And that's why it's beautiful. And this is a kind of art deco typeface, uh, sometimes stick, sometimes thing. And can you guess what kind of game this is used in? It's a Conan the Barbarian setting. Uh, thematically, I don't think it works, but again, uh, they didn't know what was correct or what was wrong. They were trying to th uh, figure things out. So it, I think that was more exciting time. So you can see this wonderful mismatches like this. A serif typeface. So, so this is one of the most uh, famous uh, serif typefaces, I would say. Uh, not because of this particular design or game. Uh, this game looks like this, by the way. But because it was used in uh, a Final Fight or later Street Fighter 2. So when I saw this first ty uh, typeface first, I saw, that's Street Fighter. So I instantly recognized uh, without looking at name. And, but yeah, I just remembered from like 10 years old when I was playing this. And Street Fighter 2 later uh, makes their own typefaces uh, like, oh, sorry, this is uh, how Final Fight looks like, by the way. So this is a Super Street Fighter 2, uh, which is like an extended design, or I should say vertically condensed design. And the lowercase height is only four pixels, which uh, sacrifices the legibility of E and S, but I think in context, it actually works. Uh, this is how it looks. And so th this is a, a brief history of uh, Street Fighter typography. And I think, yeah, this S and E actually is uh, readable, not legible, but I think it's fine. And you see that there's like, like huge uh, period of orange and blue uh, coloring. And that's kind of like action film posters, you know, using lots of orange and blue. And when, when it comes to video games, you can blame Final Fight for that. And this is another nice uh, kind of semi-serif design uh, for fighting game. It has a really beautiful uh, kind of semi-slanted uh, numbers. Uh, it even has a horizontal stress. Uh, this lowercase g is fantastic. And uh, this one uh, has like a, a few really good ideas. Uh, first of all, it's using eight uh, pixels in full uh, in height, but because it has gradation, you can tell the break of the line. So I think this solution makes sense in multicolored uh, typeface. And then also my p uh, particular favorite is uh, uppercase G, which has this brown pixel in the middle, uh, which kind of works as a counter. So you can have three stem thickness and still have just one uh, course bar. But be by having this uh, pixel, uh, you can express both. Yeah, this one. All right. Uh, calligraphic and handwritten typefaces. Let's start with one of the oldest ones. So this is a kind of Greek inscriptional typeface um, used for like, uh, this kind of puzzle game. And the O has a dot in the middle. I think in the original like, Greek inscriptions in the old days, people were uh, car carving up letter O using compass, so there wasn't like a needle point in the middle. That was not necessarily a feature of the letter originally, but this is uh, replicated here, which is a really nice touch. And there's also Irish or Celtic design here. If you look at locus D or T or R, you can clearly see this is Celtic and you can also add gradation and shadow in eight pixels. It's, there's so many things going on in here. Again, it's a really wonderful design. And this is Simpsons. So this is uh, Konami's really famous Simpsons game. And Konami did a really good job capturing the, thank you, uh, uh, subtitle typeface. Like capital I, uh, Y especially is really iconic of the show. And there's lots of like ninja and samurai games. So 
you can almost see like really fat uh, inked brush running on this pixel grid. And it looks like this. It looks very Japanese. <coughs> and this is a kind of horror game. So you can see kind of wobbly Lombardic design uh, in this game, uh, Ghosts and Goblins. In the sequel, Ghosts and Ghosts, they made the capital letters bold. So you can see changes like that. I don't think the change in lowercase is necessarily an improvement. Um, but I think the, the lowercase actually doesn't appear in the game, so they might have been just a placeholder. Like that. Um, this is how it appears in the game. And there's also a similar looking typeface. It kind of looks like a horror game, but it's actually a really difficult game to describe. No, it's not difficult, but like, so it's basically a reversey with horse racing. Like, who came up with this? So you, you play reversey, or I, do, I don't know how you call it here. I mean, in Japan, we call it othero. Yeah, imagine if your, your client approaching saying, hey, we have an idea of combining reversey and horse race. Can you suggest a typeface for it? I, c I can't. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this typeface is at least beautiful. <laughs> So yeah, and um, this is, uh, next one will be the last one. So this is one of uh, my favorite. It's a really beautiful typeface. It's a kind of English round hand or copper plate uh, capitals and uh, pixelated really beautifully in this grid. And it's using gray pixel as a kind of thickness below one uh, pixels, uh, one pixel thickness. So it is really uh, complex design, but this uh, context of this type uh, context of this typeface is really messed up. Can you imagine again what kind of game this is? So this is actually a space shooter. Your enemy is an uh, evil space showgirls. <laughs> and they're sometimes on a dragon or snakes. I don't know. Again, I don't. <laughs> so I don't know. Sometimes you might be in mood for this. I don't know. So yeah, that's a brief tour of my collection. So as you can see, you might have thought 8x8 eight eight pixels uh, might be really limiting. But once you put color and animation into equation, there are actually so much, so much possibilities, so many things you can do. So it, uh, I think there's a, there hasn't been enough atten uh, attention paid to this uh, genre. But there's uh, actually a whole bunch of uh, hidden gems in the category. So I think it's. Uh, time we have a like, serious uh, crack at this. So, thank you very much.